morning everybody this is Isabel at Wildfire and Wax Studio um, for our weekly live session of um, fire paint with me right so today we are covering yes 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 do, 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 do. drum roll we are covering blow torches now I am going to talk a little bit first for five minutes um, and wait uh, for you guys to uh, be live okay uh, so give me a little quick hello if you're in I see that's one person is actually watching that's good that's good that's good um, uh, so basically yeah it's been really really busy here um, I've got a workshop tomorrow in Dublin uh, with a really, really cool group of people who have been talking to people, those people actually for the last few weeks already. Uh, there's some emails and various things. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to this. And I'm not really looking forward to waking up at five and leaving at six because I live in Claire. But be there for 10 until four and we're gonna have fun. We're gonna have loads of fun. and. Right now, uh, you can't really see most of the studio, but it's literally empty. Most of my stuff is basically in boxes. <laughs> I have also been uh, uh, doing a lot of cakes. For those who uh, do not know what cakes are, they're basically the encaustic medium. You know, we will talk about that next week, by the way. Uh, basically, which is pure beeswax and damar. They are mixed at a specific ratio and then you pour them into those little tins and they make those yummy yummy little cakes now these are non-pigmented and then after that i'm gonna add pigment to them and we're gonna make colors so that's for tomorrow uh, so i've got loads of them i got about four kilos which is a ridiculously large amount of, of beeswax but uh after the, the workshop i did last uh, last month uh in dublin i certainly know that the people in dublin they are eager super eager so coming prepared uh, i've also been very busy with my website um which is launching uh next monday uh so this has kept me very very busy and you know what little secret it's actually live right now so if you want to have a little sneak peek at it or if you want to watch it first about all the workshops that i have uh, coming up uh, in uh, during the summer or all the originals the works that I sell on it uh, send me a quick email uh, via my website I'm gonna send the link and I will send you the secret link to the shop but shh, don't tell anybody okay right now blue torches yes blue torches is one of the reasons why I actually do encaustic painting I adore encaustic painting because I think it's an absolutely incredible medium. It's so versatile. It smells beautiful. The colors are lush. It flows. But what really, really, really gets me is the fact that you are actually painting with fire. And that is just blowing my mind. Another secret about me? When I was a child, actually all the way until the age of 18, when I moved um, out of my family's home and went to college, I was petrified about fire. Absolutely petrified. Scared about it, never lit a match, literally just couldn't even go near it. And then moved to college and I had to cook for myself and then lit my first match. Literally, I am not kidding you not, that is real. So for those of you who go, fire, oh no, it's scary, it's dangerous, look who's talking here, I am a total paramaniac here, sorry, some people call me like this now, <laughs> I Tara, uh, but uh, please don't be scared, because I see it every time in my workshops people arriving the first time i actually switch on the blowtorch everybody literally moved back two feet and then they start very small i'm going to show you the different blowtorch that we use and then they always end up having a go at the big one i swear it's just incredible it's it's there's something about 
painting with fire, which is exceedingly empowering, which makes you feel, yeah, you know, I feel powerful, I feel beautiful. I don't know, that, that's what makes me feel. Just let me know if some of you have already using blowtorch in your work or fire, please do let me know in the link here. And hi, Stephanie, how are you? Um, and uh, we can have a chat about it. Okay, two things first safety obviously uh, safety is one of the most important thing for any basically painting medium literally anything you do you know what I mean if you even if you're painting with oil or anything else you would have to be very safe with what you do right now ventilation are always going on and on and on about ventilation. Ventilation is exceedingly important. So make sure that either here, for example, I've got ventilation installed in the studio. If you do not have that leisure or that luxury, make sure that you have an airflow going into your studio or in the room where you work, okay? So either a window and a door, so basically the air just moves. Some people also get one of these little small fans, you know, those little rotating fans which basically moves the air out of the studio and that is exceedingly important. Not that um, encaustic is not toxic, it's not toxic, however you have to be sure that the air is fresh and clean, okay? Like you would do with oil paint, for example, if you use turpentine or white spirit or things like that. So that is very important for you to do, okay? The next thing is also because you're going to work with fire, make sure that your desk is cleared, that your air is up, okay? You don't want to catch fire. You don't want to have anything, you know, your clothing and everything like that. You don't want to wear something that will be obviously flammable. And make sure so that any flammable materials that are actually on your desk are literally out of the way. We're talking if you are using white spirit or if you're using, for example, shellac, which we're going to go through, or anything else, rags, tissue papers, you know, bits, bits of anything that is lying around. Please make sure that they literally are pushed on the sides, okay? Also, what you also need uh, is a fire extinguisher. So I have one in here, a fire blanket, and also water next to you, just in case. And I would actually add a fourth one, which is an aloe vera, just in case you burn yourself. But if you're using safely, if you are using it gently, it will not burn yourself. I've never burned myself, and I use it every day for the last five, six years. So basically that is something that you need to be aware of. And I want you to be very aware of anytime you do any type of medium. The safety is extremely important. I also wanted to give you a disclaimer. What I'm gonna show you and talk to you about is mostly techniques that, uh, for your own information, I am not responsible for whatever you do. Uh, with your blowtorch. Okay? Now, what do you need a blowtorch for in the, in the encaustic process? Basically, you need it to fuse. We went over that before. Fusing is basically a necessary process when you do encaustic, which means that when you apply a, a, a layer of pigmented beeswax onto your board, you basically need to apply heat to it, which encaustic goes encaustic means applying heat. Why would you need that? Well, basically, you need this in order for that particular layer of beeswax, when it's cool, to basically bind or be bound to the under layer. Okay? That is necessary. Otherwise, you'll be able to peel it off. Pretty simple. So, you always need to fuse. Okay? Now, there's three tools you can use to fuse. Okay? And somebody actually sent me an email uh, about this a question. Something I wanted to cover the other materials under the time, but um, the first thing you need would be a heat gun. Now she was asking me where would you get a heat gun. Now I got this one, and this one is covered in paint. But this is a black decker heat gun. Uh, I got this in Woody's or black. Um, uh, not on base, uh, B&Q, 
I think costs me about 30, 30 euro, something like that. You don't need a super powerful heat gun. It doesn't matter, you know. You, you know, even the lowest one like this works fine. And you have two settings on that, which is high and low. Now, somebody was also asking me, can you use um, a hair dryer? No, don't use a hair dryer. This blows heat as a hair dryer blows hair. And if you're using a hair dryer, it will literally push your medium of your board and you do not want it to happen okay so this is a, a thing that you are uh, a tool thing a tool that you can use in order to fuse the other things that you can use which I do not use myself but other encaustic artists do use it and do workshops about it so please make sure uh, if that is what you want uh, I am not doing is the iron I do not use the iron um, personal choice you know uh, I much prefer using my blowtorch Okay, so when you actually book it, try to book it into an acoustic workshop in Ireland or anywhere, just make sure that it, it yeah, if the iron is what you want to do, uh, make sure that the person is actually going to teach you this. I am not. Okay, now the third thing that you need and that we're going to talk about today is a blowtorch. Okay, so let's start small, shall we? Okay. By the way, please don't take notes right now, uh, there is no need for that, mostly because uh, some of the people that are watching today um, are already s subscribers into my mailing list, so they will receive the PDF and the, the replay of the video via uh, in their inbox tonight. Now, if you want to receive that PDF, which is totally free, uh, please subscribe uh, to my mailing list. I will send a link also after this is finished, but it's basically on my website www.isabelgabri.com and you go into the news blog type in your email address and then you will receive basically the PDFs and if you want to receive the one from the last couple of sessions as well um, you can also uh, ask me and I will I will send you the the, the, the the two other sessions that we've done so far okay now this is the one that I am using uh, in my for my workshops. The reason being is that we work on smaller work, which are about 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters, and you would not need a big blowtorch. Plus, it's easier, I think, for people that have never ever worked with fire to actually uh, use these guys, because creme brulee. Where do you buy these? You get these into homeware shops, you can go on Amazon, you can go on eBay, they're very, very cheap, they're about 10, 15 euro, it depends, you've got different sizes. Um, these have been very, very good, um, and they, they, they work perfect on small work, okay? Uh, also, you can use them on details, on big work. All right, but I'm gonna go and show you, I'm gonna demonstrate uh, in about 10 minutes time uh, what they do. All right, so these are really, really cool. Now, how do they work? Here you have the air flow, can you hear it? Okay, I mean the gas. And here, make sure you have a trigger. Very important, because you don't want to mess around with lighters and all that stuff, right? So basically, you click the gas, press, and this is the flame you have. And you can regulate the flame, small flame, bigger flame. Okay, so these are really, really cool. Brilliant, brilliant. If you want to get started, use these guys. I mean, they're for creme brulee. They are a housewife too. <laughs> okay, you can't burn yourself with these guys, literally. Okay, brilliant. Plus, they stand properly. They have this little stand here attached to it. Fabulous thing. Okay, so I've got a different ones like these ones. Okay, I'm going to start very small. Now, I got this guy here, uh, oh yes, different types of gases. I know when I started to do encaustic, I was like, I wish I had somebody had basically told me about all these things because I did loads of research and wondering what, what kind of gas, because you go onto different websites and you got different types of blowtorch and some using butane, some using propane, some I'm using MAPRO and you go, what the hell is going on? Which one am I supposed to use, right? So. What you would have, you have, these guys are butane, 
butane uh, cartridges or canisters. Uh, you get that in, um, actually I get mine in my local, um, how would you call this, uh, gas station, you know, a petrol station. But you can also find them in two DIY shops. Mr. Price to them, do you know that shop Mr. Price? Brilliant. That two euro, they're great. And these are for these little guys. Okay, so how do you charge them? Very simple. Here you have a little hole. You put this into the little hole, press it up. And it charged. Count up to 10, 20 working and then it's full. All right? If you have any questions, please ask me. All right? So that is for the little creme brulee, or they call them as well chef's, uh, chef's uh, torches. All right? Brilliant stuff. And they use butane. All right? Now, the other types of gas uh, that you can get will be either propane or uh, MAP, M-A-P-P um, gas. Now, MAP is the yellow canister. This guy, okay. Now, MAP Pro is really hot. It's the hottest you can find, okay. These are, are for soldering, all right. Now, uh, some people say, no, stay away from the MAP Pro. Well, it depends what you need, right? I use the MAP Pro when I work on bigger work. And when I really, I, not only I want to fuse, as we talked about earlier, but when I actually want to merge the colors and literally blend them and meld them together, okay? So I want a lot of intense heat. Okay, so that is when I would use the MAP Pro, the yellow canister, if you go into your DIY shop. Um, the other one that you have, then, so you've got butane, which is uh, something that, uh, I uh, butane doesn't work when it's too cold, that's different. And butane and propane have got the same heat, okay? MAP Pro is the hottest one. And then you have propane. Now, uh, in American, in, in the States, you can see uh, artists and it's blue. Here in Ireland, it's red. Go figure. But it's propane. Okay, so you can have the big one like this and you can have even the biggest one. All right, so uh, it's about 14, 15 euro for a canister. And that goes a very, very long way. All right, so that is the difference with the different, um, the different um, gas that you can use. All right. Is that okay? Brilliant. So, the next one that I have, and that is a, one of the first blowtorch I ever bought, okay? Because I was, oh, I'm going to start small, you know, I mean, the little one was okay, but I wanted to work a little bit bigger. Now, I bought this guy, and it's cool, I like it, but the problem is that there is no trigger on it, okay? And the trigger is something that basically self ignit Okay, so you don't need a lighter. So this guy, you need to basically put it on the table, turn the gas, and then, okay, so it's, it's cool, but, okay, you can get a smaller flame, bigger flame, all right? When the flame is on, that's cool, it's the same, but there is no trigger. So when you buy a blowtorch, make sure that there is a trigger. Literally, it's just preventing you to just put it on the table. And I, I don't find it... That's the reason why I barely use that guy. I barely use that guy, you know, uh, unless I'm really stuck. Um, so that's the one. And this one actually takes a mixture of butane and propane. Okay, so you go... So, and that is fine, all right? Um, I also have this little guy. I really like this one. I know I'm waiting until I show you the biggest blowtorch. Okay, this kind is really cool, okay? So like a little pencil. Again. Oh, come on. You see? It's like a pencil. How cool is that? Now, this guy is really, really useful if you want to do little details. I'm gonna go, when I'm gonna tilt the camera, I'm gonna show you. So this guy is really cool. I mean, seriously, I've got so many different blowtorches around. This is just ridiculous. But um, that is brilliant. Got that on eBay somewhere. I think it's called a, a pencil. Pen pencil torch. That's it. 
Then I've got this little guy, which is like a little lighter, same thing. Same thing, very small for details. Okay. Small flame, very good for details. And you also have a little latch here, this, that would basically, um, how do you call this? Um, oh my God, what's the name? Um, you see the, the flame keeps going. All right, so you got this little trigger thing here. Stops when you're working, you know, this way you can work at Portland. Okay, now my favorite blowtorch, Leslie. Blowtorch, <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> now, this is the one that I use all the time, uh, not on small works, as I talked to you already. Those small works would be this little guy, but on a bigger size, which would be, for example. Here, what I'm going to show you will be uh, 20, about 30 cent, one foot by one foot kind of balls. All right, so that's when I would use a bigger blowtorch, okay? Otherwise, it's, it takes too much time with the, um, the little one, okay? Now, this one is, uh, and um, please go and look at the, the files when I'm going to send them later on. Um, it's, uh, the brand is Burnsomatic. Oh, well, obviously it's going to be the other way around. burns matic wonderful, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant company, okay? I've got a few blowtorch from them, and they're brilliant. And this one is the TS-3000. TS-3000. There's also a TS-4000 as well, which is highly recommended, but this one is my baby. This one works perfect. Reason why. Okay, same thing. You have the gauge right here here right you have the trigger which is brilliant okay you also have a really cool grip on this aerodynamic or whatever you call this <laughs> okay brilliant for this okay plus it's really lightweight and when you move it around as well it is designed also uh, to be used upside down okay so obviously that is what you're going to do Obviously, you're going to use the blowtorch this way, holding from one hand or two hands. You need to be able to use it. So, there's this. Brilliant. Fabulous. Okay? So, same thing. Gas. Trigger. And here we go. This is your flame. Okay? I think some of them said dual flame. Uh, try to stay away from these guys. This one is perfect. Brilliant. Okay? And same thing. You can go big flame. Or you can regulate here with a little knobby thing here. Much more better. It depends what you want to do. Okay? So this one is just a business. If you want to switch it off, just turn the knob completely all the way to the end. Make sure that this is all the way to the end. Okay? Burn some Attic 3000. Seriously, I think I should work for them. I think the other thing they just did. No, seriously, they, they are absolutely excellent. Um, the last one that I have to show you here is um, one that I got recently, mostly because I, I'm working on very, very large work and I wanted more freedom of movement. Not that the, the blowtorch is heavy, okay? And mostly because I just wanted it, okay? So basically, this is, again, burn somatic. Okay, it's called uh, the Benzomatic BZ8250HT. Now, I'm, that's going to be on the file as well. And the, whole, the good thing about it is it's a trigger, okay, but it is also on a hose, okay, which is then is attached to your bottle. This one's connected to map because I'm going to work on big, so it is the, the, the very, very hot one, but you can also... Uh, use propane just like the TS3000 that I should show you those use propane okay so you can use either the map pro or the propane okay and then you have this really really cool little bag in uh, which is now attached to my desk so I can't show you but basically that holds it but you can also hold it on your belt if you like walking around and you like walking around with your blowtorch looking all cool <laughs> okay so this is the guy now the only problem that I have with this, and it's I only read about it, um, sorry, I'm stirring my coffee, 
Um, the only problem I had with it, and I, I read about it recently, actually, is that the trigger goes. The trigger goes for some bizarre reason that I totally ignore. And it's not cheap, like. Um, so basically, I have to uh, use... Oh no, it's working now! You see, it's very unreliable. <laughs> Hi, Marys! Okay, talk to you later. Thank you so much for being here. You will receive the files anyway, so don't worry about it. And you can watch the replay. So this guy is very top of with the trigger. Okay, so uh, somehow now he's making me lie because uh, this morning it wasn't working and now it is. But it's brilliant because you got that hose. Okay, so you really have that freedom of movement with it. And that is fabulous. Okay, um, now you have... Couldn't find any supplier in um, in the UK or either in Ireland, so I had to order it from the States. So it took about three weeks to arrive. A lot, you know, a lot of that stuff arrived from from uh, from America. So yeah, you need to uh, you need to give yourself the time. But brilliant, uh, brilliant, brilliant little bro torch, Burnsomatic as well. Okay, now I think I went through all of these. Okay. Now, what would you need the blowtorch for? I'm going to go over it because I'm going to show you, okay? And you're going to not look at my face, but look at what I do, okay? As I said already, uh, to fuse, okay? So you can just do a very gentle sweep with the blowtorch, very gentle, and that will fuse your color, okay? That means that when it's shiny, that means it's binded, it's bound, sorry. To the under layer okay that's the first thing it's fast as well it's brilliant for that you know I mean the heat gun I like it in order to do my first layers when I'm priming my board but the blowtorch is very quick the flame the heat when you apply it it's very fast you got that really effects it, it basically is very quick now one of the downfall with that is that you need to keep moving constantly keep sweeping movement constantly in and out okay because if you are staying obviously with your blowtorch facing uh, your work it will create a hole and you don't want to do that unless there's one technique that I show in my workshops uh, when you're actually using that particular technique okay you can also use it to pull colors from below okay I'm gonna show you all these things in in a while uh, first of all I'm gonna explain to you the different things that means you know the way you have layers and layers and layers and layers of colors and textures okay you can basically aim your blowtorch at this and then the color you know really hot and it will basically bring the color the under layers up okay so it will basically bring it up and basically reveal some of your underlayers and that is a really 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 cool technique i've been doing actually this all week uh on new works i've been working on and that is excellent absolutely excellent one way as well to use your blowtorch is to try to keep it not upright but kind of sideways so you have kind of like that safety that it won't face directly your work okay Plus, I do find that with the blowtorch, you have far less hair bubbles than using the heat gun. Now, hair bubbles, sometimes I like them in my work. I think they're cool. I think they're part of that process, but some people do not want to have them. So uh, it's very useful to basically um, use the blowtorch on this. Plus, the blowtorch also gives that very, very beautiful mirror-like glass effect okay on your work it really gives that sheen makes it nice and shiny and that is really cool okay do you guys have any questions by any chance before I uh, I show you what to do no okay so let's face the camera to the board the one that I did earlier okay now all the various flammable things away from the table A bit of coffee Right, now. 
now can you see let's see that. there we go yeah that's better now sorry i'm not going to be able to see your questions so i will reply to them after now this is one board that i prepared earlier okay uh this is a technique called the dry brush in order to give texture so i have different colors here i've got some black some indigo some blue some green some white various layers of colors here okay now we're gonna use that guy all right so switch it on so fusing if you want to keep those, those lovely textures, you know, you just need to fuse them. Okay, so I'm just going to have a quick sweep. Very quick sweep. You see, not, the colors are not merging at all, aren't they? But maybe that's what you want to keep, right? And that is enough to fuse, okay? And then you can work, add more layers to this, right? Now, you might want to merge colors. So switch it back on always switch it off if you're putting it on the side that is very important you do not want to leave a naked flame just like this on its own please switch it off switch it back on all right now i'm gonna have it on a higher setting because now i want to merge now people have the tendency to go like this well, you're using it as a brush, so basically you can hang around a little bit. Can you see it, what's going on here? They're really starting to merge the colors together. Now, this is what we call a hard fuse. You're really merging those colors together. See, hanging around here from this one. Now, here, your medium is really hard, so it's really starting to move. So I've got a little bit of a slant on this table, so it's going to start flowing. Now, that is really cool if you want to do sky or sea, things like that. a little bit it's also creating cells can you see them here makes lovely little patterns okay it's actually gonna take a while you see here I went way too hot on this It's creating a hole and that is an absolute pain okay now what it is very very handy to use the blowtorch with is to make what we call the shellac burn so one second i'm going to move the hot plate because i've got a bigger one here that i've been working on forever there's always a work in the studio that you've been working on for years literally years and that is never ever ever gonna be finished now I'm hoping to have this facing your way on a second I'm just gonna check very quickly yeah now shellac burn is basically shellac is this product can you see it yeah now this one is the what gives a filigree kind of pattern and we'll go into it another time okay uh, on this one I've had colored shellac burn i.e. pigment I've been added to it now I am going to use the small one for this because I want to uh, go into details. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see. Yeah. Okay. And the blowtorch is excellent for this. Can you see these little patterns being created here? I'm not sure if you can. And I always use it sideways. And 
you don't have to use it everywhere and I'm not sure if you were able to see this so not sure now but that's what you use the blow torch with uh, to make the shellac burn now sorry for that I'm just gonna tilt it again sorry for my big finger into it right so do you guys have any questions before I let you be thank you Paula thank you so much um, do you have any questions for me or anything you would like to know a bit more about no well, don't worry about it. I'm going to let you go because I always try to keep these um, for about half an hour, not too long, because I don't want to take too much of your time. But if you have any other questions now, you can, oh no, I forgot to ask her that. Either you send me a PM or an email or via my page and uh, I will reply to them uh, to the best of my ability. Now, uh, next week, I am going to cover uh, beeswax. Oh, the subject of beeswax okay what beeswax to use where can you get it and what is medium how do you make medium basically uh, I call this a whole ball of wax okay uh, so that's gonna be next week's uh, session now if you want to receive this one uh, you can basically send it to me uh, again go on to my website go into the the blog section of it and type in your email and I will send you the, the PDF file and a replay of that video. I hope you enjoyed, I hope I answered most of your questions and um, I will talk to you next week. Bye!